Oh no! I just finished an order, did the drop off, and then my car dies on me again. This is so scary. My name is Russ and I make videos to help drivers like you. So learn from my example and let's get into what happens when your car breaks down on you. And this is gonna go from the least painful to the most painful. But first, you need to keep in mind when you break down, you need to prepare yourself mentally because you're gonna absolutely be surprised. This isn't something that you can plan for. And just like right now, I was terrified to hear that dinging, the engine dying. So prepare yourself now for when this happens to you. And how can you prepare? Well, the best way is to have a lot of supplies in your car. And that could include a blanket to sit on while you're making repairs. Screwdrivers, you know, Phillips, slotted, have some pliers, have some road flares, LED lights, have flashlights. You know, the sun's going down now. What about when it's dark? Can you change your own tire in the dark? Also have some duct tape. You never know if you're going to need it. And most important, have a set of jumper cables. If your battery dies on you, then you can beg someone to help you. So all these steps where you can prepare in advance are really gonna help you. They're gonna save you time. And more importantly, they're gonna save you a lot of money. So let me encourage you to do that. And God forbid someone get injured. Do you have a first aid kit in your car? Do you have any snacks, water, something to get you by until you can be towed? All right, so let's go over some examples, least painful to most painful. Join me in the car. What a day to break down. The Santa Ana winds are back again. Pretty crazy. All right, so we've already talked about being prepared before you break down. Now let's go through some scenarios from least painful to most painful, and that way you can manage your expectations. In all of these cases, the first primary concern is your safety. So when you break down, try to get to the side of the road, try to pull off the road as much as possible. You don't want to be in an area where a car could hit you and kill you. One of the most common scenarios would be a dead battery. I personally change my battery every three years, no matter what, because paying $30 per year is nothing compared to being stuck on the side of the road, begging someone for a jump. But regardless, I also have jumper cables in my trunk and I have used them before and I've used them to help other people. One thing that I haven't tried, they have those portable power banks that could jump your car. That might be something to look into. I personally haven't yet because I'm not going to have a problem with a dead battery because I change it well before it would ever have a chance of dying. The next painful thing would be having a flat tire. This has happened to me quite a bit, especially doing food delivery. So what you need to do is prepare in advance. Do you know where your jack is, the tire iron? You need to know exactly where they are in your trunk and how to get to them. And I would recommend practicing actually change your tire on your own in a safe environment. That way when you're under the stress and pressure being on the side of the road, you'll be confident that you can do it. The next kind of breakdown, which is terrible, is if you run out of gas. I personally recommend gas up before every day before you start. That way at the end, you know how many trips you did and then fill up again so you know how much gas you used. That's just what I do. At least definitely never go below a quarter tank of gas. I've heard that if you turn really sharply or if you obviously let it run out of gas, the fuel pump could die because it would suck up any sediment that's in the bottom. Don't ever take this chance. Just keep your gas tank full and definitely don't go below a quarter tank. There's not really anything you can do to prepare because no one wants to keep an empty gas can in their car. I know I'm not going to do it. The easiest thing is just don't run out of gas. And should you run out of gas, now you're putting yourself at the mercy of others because you need their help. You're going to have to walk, find some place with a gas can, walk to the gas station, fill it up, bring it back, put it in your car. Hopefully that's enough. You may have to do it again, like those ladies probably did that I tried to help in a previous video that I mentioned. All right, this next one, this happened to me and <laughs> it was miserable. Your starter might die. Most of us have automatic transmissions. So, you know, if you had a manual transmission, you could try to push your car and start it that way. But most of us don't. So when your starter goes out, you're going to be stuck wherever you're at. I recommend have some sort of towing capability and there's different memberships either through your insurance or commercially look into it 
because one of those companies is well worth having. If you're paying, say, $100 a year and they'll tow you, they have gas cans with them, they could gas you up. And if you're locked out of your car, they could help with that. So I personally do recommend that. So just a quick interruption, if you're getting value out of these tips, would you hit the like button? And feel free to like the channel as well. That helps YouTube get this video out to drivers like you. Thank you, I do appreciate it. So when your starter or another big component in your car fails where you can't drive anymore, you're going to feel the pain. You're going to be at the mercy of whoever comes to help you. Most likely you're going to have to have a tow and they're going to take you to whatever repair shop that you know of or they know of. In my case, I wanted the tow truck driver when my starter died to take me back to my mechanic. Yeah, it was a long way away and he had a buddy who had a shop and I didn't distrust him. I knew that he was telling the truth, but obviously it was in his interest to tow me less miles. That way he can go on to another job. And at that point, once my car was off the tow truck, I was done. I had to wait until that mechanic fixed my car. Thankfully, the part did come in later in the afternoon and he fixed it and I was able to get home by nighttime. But what if this isn't the case? What if you tow your car to the mechanic and they're busy or they need more time to look at your car or they realize your car is in serious trouble and they need to order parts? Then what do you do? I hope you have family and friends that could come get you. If not, you may be forced into getting a hotel and staying nearby until they can fix your car. So you can see in this case, when a big component on your car fails, it's gonna cost you money. If, if that's either in parts, in a hotel, in a rental car, you can quickly see how your costs are just gonna start going up and you're at the mercy of others. So in these kind of situations, just realize you're probably gonna get taken advantage of. Definitely you're not gonna get a good deal, and that's fine, that's how it is. You're in an emergency situation, you need help, you're paying someone else to help you, and you just deal with it and move on. So one thing that'll always make it better, be kind to those that are helping you. Just smile and say thank you, because you are paying for their services, you have no other choice, and so you just deal with it and move on. So now we've gone over the examples of what happens when you break down. There are some very important considerations that you need to take into account, and that's time, money, and health care. So obviously, when you're broken down, you're going to spend all your time fixing your car. You're also going to spend a lot of money, and you have to do this. So please save in advance, because in an emergency, again, you're not going to get a good deal. You just need to get back on the road. Another sad impact, but it's reality. If you're fixing your car, it's impossible to go out and make more money. So deal with it, fix it right, and then get back on the road and get back to making money. Another thing, you know, usually when you break down, you're not getting hurt, but if you're in an accident or some other scenario where you get injured and you start having medical bills, that'll significantly impact you. Here's another important consideration. Are you saving for a new car? I think I've made repairs on basically every major system in this car. So it is important to save up money. One day it's going to be dead. I'm not going to be able to fix it. And I need to have those resources ready to get into a newer car. That way I can get back on the road. At a certain point, things are just going to break too much on this car that it's going to be too expensive. So recognize that with your own car. Set a dollar limit now. Figure out whatever criteria you're going to use to know when enough's enough and you have to get into a different car. Otherwise, the car can nickel and dime you to death or it can completely destroy you. Say the engine blows up, transmission goes out and you have no money, then you're in big trouble. So please save money now, put a little bit every month aside and save towards a new car. Now, say you end up not needing it. Well, great. I'm sure we can all use more money. So you're not going to waste your time. All right, so the sun's going down here. It's time to hit the road. Thankfully, this car is not broken right now. Do you know that gig work is really hard on your car? Think of all the times we're starting, stopping, turning, opening and closing your doors. It really beats up your car. You know, that brings up a good point. Are there things that you can do to keep your car from breaking to begin with? Yeah, that's called preventative maintenance. And I've made a video on that. It's gonna show you some simple things that you can check in your car to make sure that you're okay to be on the road. 
So do please share in the comments below any stories that you have of breaking down and if you have tips for other drivers to help them deal with the situation should you ever break down. All right, let's watch this video next and I'll see you there.